So what's it like going for tapas in the age of coronavirus in Spain? Today, James and I are visiting four of our favorite tapas bars and we're gonna see what it's like. We're in the historic center of Madrid and we're gonna be visiting some old friends along the way. So venga, let's go. So just waiting in line, that's the thing you have to do these days is wait in line because there's limited space inside now. They're not packing them in. But I'm really excited to take you in and show you guys what the measures are that tapas bars are taking to keep people safe because I didn't even know what they are. I'm looking forward to figuring it out and learning because it's the first time we've been out for tapas in the center. So, so you're going to find as you go into the bars, hand gel that you've got to use to sterilize yourself. So normally this place is really, really busy and you've got, you know, people crowded in here. So they've got tables in here. I don't know if they actually have standing room allowed, but they've set tables up here inside. And I went to order at the bar and they said, no, you've got to wait for the waiter to come and order. I mean, I'm going to see what it's like at the other bars. I didn't even know I hadn't been out for a tapas really like this in the center. So it's a bit of a discovery. But as you can see, they've got these big uh, perspex screens to, to protect the bartenders. It's, uh, it's the new normal. One thing that hasn't changed is the vermouth. So cheers, mm, Yali. Cheers. Salud. Oh, mask on. Mask on. So busy, multitasking. Lucky I am a woman. <laughs> Here you roar. So obviously you've got to wear your masks in these places, but if you're eating and drinking, you don't have to wear your masks. You take it off to, to eat and drink. It's kind of how it works. What you're also going to find now is they won't give physical menus. There actually was never a menu in this place. It was always written up there, but you'll see a lot of bars that have QR codes. They've got one here. You scan it and the menu comes up on your phone. Very technologically advanced for Casa Labra. I'm really curious to see how it is at these different bars because uh, I wasn't expected it to be so kind of intense here. I thought it would be a little looser, like some of the places in our neighborhood that it's just masks and that's the really only difference. But these guys got to really set up, which is great. It's protecting people, right? Yeah. We have our, our tours come here, so it's great to know that people are going to be protected and it's organized. Yeah, feel safe. Feel safe. Mm. We're a bit out of habit of shooting tapas videos. I just took a bite without Yoli filming me take oh, a bite, no. which uh, it was pretty good. It was wide-eyed good. So second bite. Mm. Even better. The bacalao here is amazing. And I'm a kiwi. I know fish and chips. And this stuff is good. So good. Hey. What do we get, Yoli? Well, James got noti and got some croquetas. Ah, for you, because you're the croqueta queen. Thank you. So these are ham, right? Bacalao. Oh. It's all cod, baby. It's cod all the way down. Hot, hot, hot. <laughs> mm. Very soft. The flavor is just delicate, beautiful. All right, rest of the remote. Oh. So these guys have a sign to remind you, keep the keep the distance, keep the security distance. No more than 10 people per table. Got to use the mask, got to wash your hands. Only one person in the bathrooms at a time. Don't share knives and forks and put your trash in the bin, which, you know, in some of these places is a challenge because the tradition is to throw it on the floor. Yeah. I wonder if that's a tradition we're going to lose. I know. Throwing trash on the floor. I'm sure there's some people who won't be upset about that. Uh -huh. All right, let's hit the next stop. Hasta luego. Gracias. So I've just met these two guys. They're here, tourists. There are tourists back. This is Matthew and Alessandro. They're living in France and they're coming to Casa Labra. And they're wearing masks. And Alessandro's a doctor and he's very impressed with how Spain is handling coronavirus. Hey, how about that? So it's an honor meeting this guy here. <laughs> Popular, famous on YouTube. So Great. we're meeting a celebrity, basically. Yeah. <laughs> if I wasn't wearing a mask, you'd see I'm blushing. <laughs> but yeah, let's get, grab a photo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hi. How are you? Nice to meet you. Hi. Okay. Next up, Casa González here in the Huertas neighborhood. ¿Qué tal? ¿Cómo estamos, Dani? Eso. Hola. ¿Qué tal estás? Ta, 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 ta. Dame el poco, venga. Dame loco. <laughs> so here we are in Casa González. This man over here is Paco. Masked up, running it. It was started by his grandfather. You can see a picture of his grandfather above there. And, uh, they survived the civil war, they'll survive this. <laughs> hand gel. Going out for tapas is hard on your hands, man. I know, no skin left. So here are the rules, like in Labrador they had the rules here. It's like wait till you get given your table, so you have to come and wait. Uh, four people crossed out, now six groups per table maximum. It used to be four. Uh, hey. And here we go, here is the menu. This is their, <laughs> this is their QR code, Paco said. So <laughs> Labrador had the QR code, these guys have got a massive menu that they bring up to your table. So back to our rules. 
So you see, it was four people max from now it's six because as the de-escalation of, of, of lockdown has gone, they've gone expanding how many people can, can sit down. You can't put the tables together and you're allowed, if you're eating breakfast, you're allowed to be here for a half hour and if you're eating dinner, an hour, just so you can get things moving to, to try and earn enough money because it's hard for these guys right now. Mm. I mean, to pay the staff and keep it going. So you gotta keep the tables turning a little bit. This is Danny. He is the I, uh, amazing waiter here in Casa Gonzalez. <laughs> and he speaks English. <laughs> More or less. You know, what's interesting is in our neighborhood in Pueblo Nuevo, places don't, everyone seems to be doing it pretty well, COVID and protection. They don't have as many signs and things like that, but these places that, that are wonderful in the old center that are, you know, really quality places, like, I don't know, I have good taste in bars, I hope. Mm -hmm. They do being bars well, they do food well, they do booze well. But they also do COVID well, mm -hmm. you know? So far, there's two places we've been to. They take it seriously. They've got a mask on, they've got the rules, they've got the thing. And, and it's good to see, you know? It, 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 it shows the kind of the professional professionality that there is at the core here. So we've got a little cava to celebrate. I mean, Yoli and I haven't been out for a bit of a tapel to these, to these places, which, you know, I've known them for years and I love them so much. They're a part of what Madrid is, what Spain is for me. And so I wanted to celebrate a little bit. And I didn't know, I didn't kind of realize how much I'd miss them until mm. I came back. Now you're about to cry. Yeah, I'm gonna get emotional. Aww. It's the vermouth. Cheers. Cheers, my love. Salud. So this cheese that we got is from Asturias and it's called Choke the Chicken, pretty much. And it gets really dry in your throat. It's really, really yummy. I know I'm making it sound horrendous, but uh, Choke the Chicken Cheese. It's very yummy. So what's it like? It's creamy, but it's quite, once you swallow, it's quite dry. So, yeah, you need some cava to accompany and like, pass it down. Yeah. <laughs> it's yummy. So just clarifying, the cheese is called Afuega, Afuega. El pitu, a fuego el pitu, which means strangle the chicken or choke the chicken. But what's interesting is it's got a little spiciness to it. They have a blanco and a rojo of these cheese. And this one's a little spicy. And I just had a bite and I was like, ooh, it's a little bit spicy. Which means I'm going native. I'm becoming Spanish because it's not spicy at you all. You sound like my mother saying that that's spicy. I sound like Yoli's, spicy. Yeah, Yoli's mother who's like, you put pepper on the food and it's like, ooh, you know. <laughs> and so I've obviously gone Spanish, but uh, I'm not choking on it. But pica, it's quite spicy. <laughs> pica. Ooh. All right, little pre mask. Swig. Mask up. And go. Onwards. <laughs> Venga, let's go. Gracias, Paco. Nos vemos. Gracias. Hasta luego, Paco. Chao. Right. All right. Okay, next stop. Man, the sun is out. Yeah, I know. Hot. Next stop. <laughs> Hot. Hot. <laughs> Next stop, we're going to the classic little double whammy, the, the La Casa del Abuelo, Casa Tony, two punch, double punch, double whammy. I don't know what I'm trying to say. Some metaphor that is escaping me because of the intense heat on my forehead. <laughs> but uh, gambas and then Casa Tony just for like hugs and love. Oh, you know? no hugs. No hugs. Lots of love and maybe some moyejas. Mm -hmm. Maybe not. I don't know if it's a moyejas day or not. Oof. Be too hot for Mollejas. Too hot for Mollejas. That's a t-shirt. Mm -hmm. So the Casa del Abuelo family runs in, in like the third, fourth generation. 1906 is when it started, just one street away from here. They have four different places here in the center that they've opened over the last, over the decades. A couple of them are still closed and this one is open. So uh, it's time for gambas al ajillo. These Aww. guys are famous for this dish and, uh, and it's been a while. It's mm. been too long. Actually, no, it hasn't been. About two weeks ago, Yoli and I had some. We didn't put it on YouTube, we put it on Instagram, so. <laughs> two, second one. Yeah. Hygienic white per person here at La Casa del Abuelo. So as I say, everyone's doing it a little bit differently, but they're doing it right, which is good. And I see a little QR code to my right. Hygienic white to my left, QR on my right. I'm <laughs> surrounded by health and safety. <laughs> and some wine up here, thank God. <laughs> one thing I don't like is I'm starting to see this. People oh, are no. wearing it on their sleeve, like chuno, yeah. like hey, man. If you see it, it's yeah. not cool. <laughs> kind of dorky. All right, I'm gonna try the QR code and see what's going on. Boom, boom. And it opens the menu. Look at that. Ole. They are bubbling as they must. Look at this massive chili that's in here. This big guy right here that will, man, these are big boys. Oh man, it's good to be back. It's good to be back. <laughs> Cheers, hot, ha ha. Not so hot. Mm. 
like butter. Mm. I can't believe it's not butter. <laughs> so. It's not, it's gumbas. <laughs> wow. So Yeli, what's, I mean, COVID update from La Casa del Abuelo? What, what's going on here? Uh, well, I forgot to use my wipes uh, <laughs> before eating, so that's bad. Yeah. But I mean, it feels, you know, it feels pretty normal quieter of course there's no screens in front of the bar so you know that's uh, more normal than you know the other places but I guess that here they rely less on people you know going there's not as much the bar, bar. yeah there's, there's no bar tables. action it's more like restaurants so that's why there's no plastic screen and I mean you know pretty normal yeah only the waiters are wearing masks <laughs> yeah so I mean here's the thing what I love about these places is that they've got a hard road ahead you know willie was saying like there's not a lot of people around now and and how can they support all the workers but they're worried about it and the next six months are going to be critical for these places As i say they've survived a lot you know looking at the old photos of the, the abuelo family you know here's the original entry over here there's a great photo here looks like from the 50s they've survived that much so i they've got the the ganas the will to survive this and and they're doing it right, so so fingers crossed. So this is my man Willie. He runs the Abuelo bars and around here. It's great to see these old places, you know, surviving. Coming back, you know. yeah. Esta también salimos. Yes. Yes. He's saying, I'm saying, you know, these are com these are companies that have survived the civil war, and he said this one will survive as well. So sounds good. Good. Nadia, Willie. I'm there. Golo. Hasta luego. Ciao. Ciao. Hasta luego, Willie. Adiós. Ciao. Hola, ¿qué tal? The sterilization table. Am I good, Yoli? You're great. I'm clean. ¿Qué tal, tío? ¿Qué tal, Mato? Alegro verte. Hola, ¿qué tal? ¿Qué tal, bonito? Alegro verte, ¿no? ¿Cómo te llevas? Yo en mi línea. Perfecto. It's good to be back, guys. The return to Casa Tony. No QR codes here, just the menu is stamped up on the wall. But yeah, David's here. It's, uh, he's on the grill, but yeah, it's been three, four months and you know, this is my happy place. This is my home, my other home, my second home. Mm -hmm. And just to be back here and see these people and... Your eyes are lit up. My eyes are, that's the sunlight, yeah. <laughs> that's the lack of sleep, you know. <laughs> but no, it's good to be back. So, you know, again, we're just asking David how it is and he said it, it's quiet. It's actually pretty good. Oh, pretty good, there's like six people. Mm. But I feel like when you walk into a bar in COVID land and there's like more than six people, you're like, oh, it's doing pretty well. You're doing great. Yeah, it's the new the new rich is like there's, <laughs> there's someone in your bar. He said it's, it's too quiet. Again, the hard part for these places because of the government assistance has not been the, lo the, the lockdown because they were supported by the government. The hard part is once you open. And then can you pay your staff, survive with the, with the amount of work there is, uh, particularly these places in the center that really rely on a, a chunk of the tourism dollar. But again, if there's will in a lot of these places, they will survive. It's good to be back. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Tony, keeping up the tradition of the good free tapa. That's what we love about it. And these guys do good bucket on us. Ooh, they're hot, straight out of the fryer. So I don't have an enormous stomach, I'm not a crazy person, so just two media raciones, some of my favorites. The chumpies, the champiñones, the mushrooms, and the bravas. And yeah, it's good to be back. I mean, me without tapas, is that's not me, so. So the photos here aren't as old as those in La Casa del Abuelo, but photos from the past of all the great times we've been had here. There's Juan, David's brother, who's not working today. There's Carmelo, who was running this when I first discovered Casa Tony when I first came to know it. He's still the owner, but he's retired, so he's one of the, the partners as well with Juan and David. And just to see these, these images, look at these guys down here, back in the day. Carmelo, when they first opened, and that's back in the day where you could, behind the bar, smoke a cigarette. <laughs> now, you, now you gotta wear a mask, so oh, the times have changed. <laughs> So guys, while there may be QR codes and screens and some of the tapas bars and they may be a little quieter, I think what I've, what I've felt and realized today is the food is still wonderful and the good places, the good places are fighting and the soul is still there. The people are there who, who, who put all the passion into what they're doing and the soul of tapas is, is still with us and that's just wonderful and it feels great to be back. So if you wanna keep living the tapas dream and watching videos of wonderful tapas bars, click this playlist here which I've made of some of my favorite tapas places all over Spain. We'll see you over there in a moment. All right, thanks for watching.